every situation that we're in, that we would give, uh, sing our praises to you. Thank you for being uh, with us and saving us. And, and Lord, uh, we're grateful for your holy church. We pray blessings upon us that uh, not only when we leave this place, but right now in every moment of our life, that we would be your people. Blessing you and blessing others. Forgive us of our sins. All of this we ask in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Tap United Methodist Church. My name is Tommy Earl Burton. I'm so blessed to be your pastor here. And for those that are watching online, we are uh, glad that you could join us. If you would like to keep up with our announcements, let us know. Uh, get in touch with us. We'll get you added to the email list. We send those announcements out every week. person, if you will, look on the back of your bulletin, you'll see our announcements for this week. Um, this coming Wednesday, we, we continue, or uh, for this fall, we'll start back with our family-friendly schedule, where at 5.15 we have a meal, a uh, family meal in our fellowship hall, and at 6 o'clock there's going to be uh, a Bible study. Uh, we're going to meet uh, in the uh, uh, sanctuary. This week is going to be an introductory to what we're going to be doing. It's over a disciple's path. I have posted that uh, on uh, Facebook. If you have any questions about uh, that book, it's a wonderful study about uh, our membership vows, our baptismal vows, prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. And at the end of it, uh, I've talked with Cokesbury, and they have shared with me a link, a spiritual gifts link, uh, which would help us with uh, our vows to find out where we're gifted and where we've been called to serve. And our last uh, meeting of, of that uh, will be to discuss, uh, everyone will take an online test. And uh, it's not a, a pass or fail thing, it is to help you. I took one before I went into the ministry. It's very helpful to see uh, what your gifts for ministry are, which will help you uh, to serve the Lord and serve your neighbor. So join us, it's introductory, you don't have to bring uh, uh, you don't have to have your book for the uh, first session, and I'll uh, get with me, and I'll help you get that book. Uh, also, a couple of things at the very bottom there, you'll see that uh, we have a special Sunday. Uh, they're all special. Amen. We have a very special Sunday coming up, Reconnect Sunday. We have survived the pandemic. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Evidently, barely. <laughs> Let's... <laughs> We're moving right along. We have survived the pandemic thus far. We pray that we will continue to do so. And on the 29th, the last Sunday of this month, we're going to have Reconnect Sunday. The Backroom Boys Emmaus Reunion Group is going to be sponsoring a meal for that day. We're going to be having a barbecue lunch served here. So we're starting back up with all of the things that we missed from the pandemic. Amen? Amen. God, thank you. God has blessed us, uh, and we're going to continue to be blessed. And that's going to be a wonderful Sunday. And since this is such a, a, a big Sunday for us, that's when we're going to be blessing the backpacks. We pray for our kids every week, every day. But we're going to have a, our blessing of the backpacks that day. We're going to have uh, uh, another uh, special event on that Sunday. The chicken dance will come back around. So for you who have kids and grandkids, or if you are young at heart, let us know. And we can move anything we need to move out of the way up here so that you can come up and do the chicken dance with your pastor. So if you know it, brush up on it. If you don't know it, go back and watch last Sunday's video and learn it. There will be a test on Sunday the 29th. So I'll be here with you, and we'll all pass that test. So uh, a lot of wonderful things that God is blessing us with. Uh, and we're going to be celebrating uh, just the fact that uh, during one of the most difficult times in ministry in ages, uh, well, since probably the last huge pandemic in 1918, uh, that during the middle of that, God blessed us, paying off our building. Amen? Amen. Praise God for that. Open up your book, and you'll see on one side our, our prayer list. Uh, keep this with you, and uh, lift up these people during your quiet time with the Lord. And then on the right-hand side there, you see our contact information for the church and for uh, for me. Maybe give me a call. And finally, if you have a smartphone, take it out, take a picture, check in here at TAP and let everyone know that this is a wonderful place where they can hear a life-changing message of Jesus Christ. If you'll remain seated, we'll continue with our worship. Jesus, keep me near the cross.
scream and be allowed to do so. And I'm talking to the kids, not the adults. And I need someone to help me with my money. Who wants to come help Brother Tommy? Come on up here, brother. Come up here, kid. Grab my, grab my offering and put it in the church for me, please. Come on down. Come on down. Put your money in the church. Jed will show you where it goes, and I'm going to get out of the way. And then the rest of y'all come up here on stage with me. And we're going to shout and jump up and down. Henceforth, we will be known as the Shouting Methodist. Yeah, hey, go put your money over there. Go put your money over there. Lydia, in the little church, right over there. Be careful. Now, that's an offering, a two fisted offering. Pay attention, adults. Amen. Can I get an amen on that? For those that are feeling guilty, we take checks. <laughs> Two-fisted check offering is acceptable too. Come on up here, lady. We're going to show them how to do this. Are you ready to dance and shout and jump up and down? I'm going to teach you a song today. A little history on this song. I was the uh, associate pastor for three years at Williams Memorial. And... Uh, we did chapel with the kids, and they taught the kids at chapel to be nice and respectable, and then they would come to chapel and learn more about Christ and what Christ was calling them to do. And on one particular day of chapel with them, I introduced them to the song, Shout and Get Happy. And these kids would uh, come in with their hands behind their backs, and I had them jumping and shouting and screaming, and one of the teachers on their way out stopped me and said, why don't you just give them Dr. Pepper and chocolate next time? She was not thrilled with what I had done. Okay, we're going to do Shout Get Happy. You ready? First thing you got to do is you got to smile. Can you smile? Can you shout? Say, shout! Real loud. Say, shout! There we go. And we're going to sing a little song. And when I say, when I sing shout, you shout that word really, really loud. And I go, shout. You shout really loud. You ready? Shout. Get happy. Shout. Get happy. Come on louder. Shout. Get happy. What about shout? You shout, sing. You ready? Sing his praises. Come on, sing his praises. This is not going over above the chicken dance. Ready? Ready? <laughs> Jed agrees with me. Receive this benediction. Sing his praises. Sing loud. His praises. Come on. Sing his praises. Sing his praises. This is part of singing and praising to God is this, bowing. Can you bow? Can you bow? All right, that's what we're going to do. And when I say bow, and I'm going to say it kind of funny, I'm going to go bow, bow, I want you to say bow, shout it out, and bend over. You ready? Bow, 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 bow. Bend forward and 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 bow, bow. Savior Jesus Christ, that he wants us to come to church and have fun. Remember the chicken dance that we did? Who remembers the chicken dance? Me. You remember the chicken dance? Wasn't that fun? I don't think I even did the chicken dance. You didn't do the chicken dance. On the 29th, the last Sunday of this month, we'll do the chicken dance again. I've got my glasses.
Matt says, Lydia, thank you. You can put those back. Um, <laughs> we have been called to have fun. God has saved us and called us to live in all of the joy that he has for us. And that means that when we sing, we sing really loud, we shout, we jump up and down, we bow before God, we worship and praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Church is supposed to be fun. Smile. When you come to church, smile. When you think of the chicken dance, what do you do? People, adults, smile. Didn't we? Wasn't that fun? You know what makes me smile? When I drive up to see this building, to know that God has called me to be here. Every single day when I come to work, I smile. Every Sunday when I walk in here and I'm the first one in the building, I think about what God has done for me and I smile. God has called us to live in all of the joy that we can handle. And then he gives us even more. And he calls us to run around and shout and enjoy ourselves. All in Jesus' name. So, now that we've done all this running and jumping and everything, can y'all have a seat right here? We're fixing to pray. Have a seat right there at the prayer rail. Or you can sit right over here at this prayer rail too. Or you can stand right where you are. Don't back up any further. You're at the edge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ava, you're at the edge, girl. Don't back up. And, uh, and with our eyes open, I want you to pray with me. And then I want you to learn the Lord's Prayer. So, Lydia, are we ready to pray? There's also a time to settle down and pray as well as jump and run around. So this is the time where we settle down and pray. So let us catch someone's attention and pray. Lord, thank you for these kids. Thank you for all the joy that they bring us. Help us to shout and sing your praises with smiles on our faces. All of this we ask in Jesus' name. And, and then all of this we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, y'all turn around and look at the Lord's Prayer. I want y'all to learn this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Can you say amen real loud? Amen! amen. All right. You may return to your seats. Thank you for coming up here this morning. There, there are some children's messages that I go, man, that was uh, straight from God. What a blessing. I am not going to blame God for this one. Uh, when you're working with kids, when you're serving with kids, they are so, so, so fun. I tried to recreate, recreate what happened in the chapel at uh, Williams, and, and you know what? It was even better. Uh, the kids were just amazing this morning. Thank you for sharing them with uh, the rest of our church family and especially with me. They are such a joy to be around. They bring smiles to my face so I want to see them every Sunday. And uh, a special thanks to the two-fisted giver out there, Lydia. That just blesses my heart to see. I hope she continues to be a two-fisted giver uh, when, when, uh, as she continues to mature. If you brought your Bibles with you this morning, if you will, hold them up. And I'm getting... Where are we? Hold up your billfolds. Uh, 
I'm shouting and getting happy up here, and I'm losing my place. And, uh, and at this time, if you will, please stand as you're able. And uh, isn't, it, isn't it just a, a joy to be around Tom Earl? You never know what's going on. And now, now I can leave and, and tell everybody, hey, I had them shouting and raising their hands in church. Uh, they're going to think we've gone Pentecostal. Stand as you're able, and let's pass the peace of Christ with one another. And let us pray. Lord, uh, thank you for that opportunity that we were just given to make sure that everything is right with our brother and our sister in Christ and with you. Lord, now that, uh, now that there is peace amongst us, Lord, we pray blessings upon the gift that we bring to, uh, to and offer up to you. Thank you for uh, the ways that you love and watch over us. All this we ask in Jesus' name. If you brought your Bible this morning and you have it handy, if you will, hold it up and join me this morning. This is God's Holy Bible. We believe that both the Old and New Testaments reveal the Word of God. We believe that it contains everything necessary for us to obtain salvation so that we can begin living an abundant life in Jesus Christ. A life that reveals works of piety and mercy. It is to be read and interpreted under the guidance of God's Holy Spirit. It is the rule and guide of our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you will, turn in your Bibles to Ephesians. Chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We're continuing our sermon series, Geared Up for Life. And today we hear Paul say that we should be living a life where we give thanks to God. Paul is telling us that uh, this is an evil world. He is telling uh, the original audience and us today, for things have not changed much, uh, that this is an evil world and that we need to be wise. Because sin is powerful. And we need to be prepared. Our life in Christ is not some sort of a separate part of who we are. We don't put on our life of, in Christ when we read our Bible and then take it off and go out and, 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 and be uh, someone else. Uh, we are to be Christian now after we give our life to Christ. After we have given our life to Christ and baptized, we are to be, uh, uh, live our lives as a new creation in Christ. And to prove his point, he tells them this contrasting lifestyle where they could choose to, to fill themselves with, with wine, that they could choose to spend their day drunk. And that there's all sorts of harmful side effects that can come from that. Or they can choose to, throughout their day, fill their lives, not with the spirits, <laughs> but with God's Holy Spirit, amen, and that our life would also be revealed through that. Just as if, and I will not give a demonstration for you all, no matter how bad you may want to see me in that shape, I will not get a huge bottle of wine and drink it in front of y'all just to prove a point that I shouldn't do that. You can use your imagination that it would not be pretty. It might be funny for a short period of time, but then later on you would go, oh wow, we don't need to do that again. That was uh, bad. 
But to be filled with the Holy Spirit is a whole different deal. I wish you would have known me before I was filled with the Spirit. Or before I, I, I've been filled with the Spirit ever since I was baptized. When I stopped squelching God's Holy Spirit, I wish you could have been with me then. There were times that I was funny and, and, and fun to be around, but the majority of the time, my fun was at someone else's expense. And I didn't do the things that I did with kids. Get them up here and have them jump up and down and shout and sing praises to God. Amen? I have lived those contrasting lifestyles. And the one that I now choose to live is the one where I choose to fill my heart with things from God. And Paul says, and I'm living it out. The result is a wonderful life. A life led under the power and the guidance of God's Holy Spirit is one where we shout and sing God's praises. Where we go throughout our day singing songs and hymns to God. Where we go throughout our day looking for the blessings of life. Walking around with a smile on our face. Amen? Amen. Those are the people you want to be around. If you go to work or you go into Walmart or you go into a, uh, you know, Denny's, wherever you go, you want to be with the people that are entertaining everybody. Amen? Can you remember when you were in school? School is a good lesson in life. It's stressful. And what does God always provide? In every class, God provided what? The class clown. I didn't have to even finish it. We all know the class clown, amen? That even when I was in school, God provided somebody to cheer us all up and to stress our poor teachers out. I had one teacher that taught the Flanagan cousins of mine, and when found out I was going to high school, almost retired. <laughs> uh, because he knew he had had the good kids first, and Tommy Earl was following behind. But the class clown breaks the monotony, breaks the stress, and makes us all laugh, case in point. The class clown that one day in high school was asked by the teacher, the whole class was asked, what's your favorite animal? And the class clown, and I, I can't tell you how I know this. Their mind always turns. Always turns. What's the funny thing I can say to entertain everybody? Couldn't wait. Got to, got to all these animals were named and explained why they liked them and everything. And he gets around to the class clown. And he says, uh, in response to what's your favorite animal, he said, fried chicken. To the office. <laughs> You know, everybody was laughing, and he, he goes to the office, and the principal says, what are you in here for? Teacher sent me. What did the teacher send you for? A boy don't lie. I always tell the truth. I tell my mom and dad the truth all the time, and I'm going to tell you the truth. Okay, what's the truth? Teacher asked what my favorite animal was, and your answer, fried chicken. The principal laughed and said, boy, go back to class and quit being so disruptive. And on the way out the door, he could swear he heard. Now, that's funny. <laughs> now, don't know if the principal actually said that or not. Back in classroom, so the, the teacher, poor teachers. Any teachers in here? Oh, God bless you. Aren't y'all so thankful that, that I'm 58 years old not in your class? <laughs> yeah, amen. And so the next day, the teacher is, is trying, you know, how can, I, how can I teach this lesson without giving the, the class clown too much, too much leeway? And so the teacher says, what is your favorite, trying to stick with the original program, what is your favorite, and she goes, live animal. And the class clown couldn't wait and gets around and, and people were saying this and that and why and was explaining and everything and got to him and he goes, he goes, a chicken. Well, why do you uh, like chickens? And he smiles and says, because you can make fried chicken out of them. Back to the office, go to the office. So he walks in, and the principal is laughing, and a class clown knows something everybody else doesn't know. It's hard to whip a kid when you're laughing, amen? Uh, even at home, it's hard to whip a kid when you're laughing, right? And so the principal's already laughing, the kid's laughing, what'd you do this time? And he explains it, and he says, boy, what did I tell you that day? I'm gonna tell you again, go on to class and quit being disruptive. And laughs again, can't whip the kid. 
sends him back uh, to class, and so the teacher uh, spends all night in prayer. How can, I, how can I not give this kid so much ammo, you know? How can I keep him from fighting back this way? And, she, oh, okay, thinks of a good one. And so this time the question is, uh, who is a person that has influenced you? You know, living or dead, who is a person that's, uh, you know, a, a famous person that, that, that influenced you, living or dead? And when it gets around to the class clown, he says, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Back to the office. That's who God's calling us to be. Not the kind of people that get sent to the office. Let me, re let me get that point straight. But can you imagine that day in class, those three days? Would that not have been the most fun three days that you've ever had in your life in school? That's us. That's us here today. This is an evil world that we are living in, and we have chosen to be wise people when we said, God, I want you to adopt me. And God saved us. Called us to be his children. Sent us here to gather together as his children and rejoice. Would we not smile if we could see Jesus come in here and sit down to worship with us today and to watch him laugh at the kids and laugh at my mistakes and smile through? Wouldn't, wouldn't we all be smiling a whole lot more than we are today? Wouldn't we be laughing a whole lot more than we are today? And the moments when he would point at me and go, <laughs> we would all laugh at that, wouldn't we? Why can't we live that out? It's because we live in a, in a world that wants to so desperately drag us back down to where they are. And that's why keeping ourselves close to Jesus Christ by reading God's Holy Bible is so important. Spending quiet time with God is so important. You have to prepare your heart every day to go out and face these things, to face these issues, to face these people. And God is calling on us to be the influence. When I go out from church and go out to eat and wearing a suit and tie, people may not know that I am a pastor, but you know what they know about people, about men who are dressed in suits and ties on Sunday? They are watching you. They know who I am. They may not have, have darkened the doors of a church. They may not be Christian. They may not have never been baptized or given their life to Christ. Don't even think about God. But when they see Tom Earl Burton walk in on Sunday, they're watching me. And you know what? I'm entertaining them. I love to smile. I love to make people smile. I love to pay compliments to people. And when I go out to eat, I pick on, on the, the waiter or the, or the waitress. Not in, a, in, a, in an ugly point, but to make them laugh. When I go to the pit grill, their waffle machine's broke. We need to add that to our prayer list, by the way. When I go to the pit grill, and they'll say, how was your meal? And I'll, I'll say, well, I never got my waffles. Or I'll ask them, knowing it's still broken, and you got any waffles, and they'll go, the machines, I'll just take pancakes. They don't serve pancakes there. I'm always doing a little something to make them laugh. Not overboard with it. Because you know who else is walking in that restaurant? The person that's frowning. The person that's never happy. The person that's never going to tip. Even if you did backflips with their food and didn't spill anything, would not give them anything to be filled with joy about. And you and I are called... To be filled with God's Holy Spirit to the point of overflowing so that those blessings can go out into other people's lives. We have been called to be the class clown at Taft United Methodist Church. Amen? Or if you're visiting and you're a member somewhere else, you've been called to be the, the class clown there. At work, at home, when you're out to eat, everywhere you go to be the kind of person that everybody wants to see and everybody wants to visit with. Not the kind of person that when they see you, they duck and run around the corner trying to avoid. That is not who we have been called to be. And I want to challenge you, if that's who you are, 
You can change. You can allow God to change you. Put a smile on your face. Live in that joy. And I'm telling you, it's contagious. If I had just stood up here and done nothing but smile at you all for two minutes, you know what y'all would have eventually done? You would have eventually been not only smiling, but laughing about what I was fixing to do next. It's contagious. Something else is contagious. Griping and fussing and whining and complaining about every little thing that's not perfect. There's nothing perfect in this world. We have to make our minds up in the name of Jesus Christ that we're going to be filled with joy no matter what happens in our lives today. And to give thanks for God in everything. Is there something horrible going on in your life? It could be worse. Give God thanks. Is something wonderful going on in your life? Give God thanks. Be filled with joy. And so our challenge this week is to ask yourself, is my life filled with the joy of Jesus Christ? Do I shout and get happy? Do I sing God's praises? Do I bow before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? I promise you, that simple. You just do those three things? Yeah. People will look at you and go, I want what they have. Is my life filled with the joy of Jesus Christ? Now, if you are the church curmudgeon, I am praying for you. If people look up and see you coming down the aisle at Walmart and go the other way, I am praying for you. I have lived a life where people saw me coming and they wanted to go the other way. I know what that life is. Join me in the path that I have chosen to find joy. Am I giving thanks to God at all times. Think about what that would do for your life if no matter what you went through, you gave God thanks. Can I tell you how many times I have visited people on their deathbeds and they smiled at me and gave God thanks for that day that they had. If someone in that point in their life can still smile, Praise God. And you know what that did for me when I left? Don't you know that I was praising and thanking God for that powerful testimony where a pastor goes to lift someone's spirits and ends up walking out feeling better because of someone who is nearing the end of their life is saying, thank you, God, for today. So I want to challenge you. Go out and be the class clown. Go out and make people laugh. Go out and be geared up for life in Jesus Christ by giving thanks in all circumstances. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And everyone said, God has spoken to you today calling you to give your life to Christ to join Christ Holy Church by profession of faith or by transfer from uh, another church, whatever it is maybe God's just calling you right where you are to, to be more filled with joy whatever it is that God's called you to do be faithful to that call I promise you change your life forever. If you will, please stand as you're able. They'll know we are Christians.
Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may we leave this place smiling and filled with all of the joy that Christ has for us. Go in peace, go in great joy.